Jackson. You took away everything. Your love was supposed to be mine, Vondrick. Instead, this creature is what you love. This mere mortal. 835, you're listening to WHFR Dearborn, the station that is... Making waves! That's <laughs> right, WHFR.FM, and hey, hey, Jim Sadis, what's up? How goes it, brother? Doing great, not man. Not bad, not bad. Cool, cool. Great to be here again. Great to have you again. Wonderful thing. Indeed. All right, so uh, you're, you're talking about, let's just jump right into this, the, uh, this movie you're partaking yeah, the, my, in. The, the silver screen debut, yeah, that big deal out here. The no budget. <laughs> Forget low budget, it's no this budget. no budget. <laughs> um... If I can shoot out an email or a web space or whatever this is, I'm a totally computer idiot or illiterate, whatever you call it. I don't have one. Um, any interested parties can go to doomandgloom.8, the number 8, amazonmetal.com, and there's some trailers and photos and updates. And looking for a maybe next summer release. It was supposed to be this summer, but you know when you do projects, yeah. things get, you know, Kind of sidetracked with you know you run into snags and whatnot and production issues and stuff but you know i appreciate the plug let me do that oh it's, yeah man yeah the vampire film it's, it's it's cool it's you know it's something i always wanted to do and the opportunity came up where i was working with some people that were pretty serious about you know it's more or less can you just make rehearsals and commit to it you know it's, it's really all it ever takes in anything is a commitment right, right you know most people can't even do that it seems we had a lot of drop-offs and people that kind of put a kink in it, you know, we had to start over a few times. Right, right. right. So, uh, can we? Uh, what's uh, what's the sadist's role in the movie, man? I am the lead antagonist. Ah. I am the the bad guy, kind of trying to uh, save my son, who is it was it was on my bloodline. Obviously, he's going to marry a mortal who he's been in love with, and I cannot permit that because it will ruin the. You just can't do that. You can't marry outside of your species or your your kind. So I'm trying to convince him throughout the movie not to do it, and. I'd like to kill her, actually, but I, the initial movie was written, I was killed by her, but it's cool because now you can do, you know, your own creation, you can do anything you want, you choose your own adventures and beginnings and ends, and little, you know, side, you know, things going on, you know, you can do whatever, you have creative freedom, so, but that's what I, that's the gist of what I'm doing, and I might write some music for it as well, um, one of the bands that is featured in the movie, uh, Avernus from Chicago, if you're familiar with that band at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're really great. They, they started that early heavy death metal. They had a female singer, and then the great Rhiannon from Somnus was on the record of The Fallen, one of my favorite records of all time. It's really a nice mixture of almost folk metal and death metal and just really emo kind of stuff, but pre that era. I hate to label it that way, but really just emotional, thought-provoking stuff about love and the, the trepidations and trials and stuff of, of just... Uh, you know, just the emotion of that and, and just death beyond the grave and, and all that stuff. Black, you know, just the darkness. It's really cool. Right on. I really recommend to listen. How do you find time for all this? I mean, with all the bands you're in and out, a movie too? Well, that was interesting. That was last winter. That was actually, we're doing a scene on October 6th, and that's the night YNT's playing here. And it's also the weekend of Cinema Wasteland. It's a big movie convention here. Uh -huh. Very recommended for visitors, hint, hint. To come out and hang out for the whole weekend because medalists get hotels in the hotel, hint, hint, hotel rooms, and hang out and drink all night. Oh, so if that's something that interests you guys, feel free. Um, it's up here in Strongsville, which is about 20 minutes from here. And um, we're going to be filming that that weekend late in the evening. But to answer the question, it was really a really taxing winter last winter, just coming home from work, working late hours, going right to rehearsal, and then juggling the Nun Slaughter record, which we were doing at that time or toward the latter half of the year, or the, like December, and, and doing the rehearsals and actually filming. And of course, like I mentioned, people dropping off and people showing up late and people just really not giving it their 110 like everybody else said they would, you know. Right. It was really just a lot of, lot of time. And you're talking about doing 10 or 12, you know, hour shoots, you know, on weekends, you know getting somewhere at like 10 at night and going home at dawn, you know, kind of like a real vampire. Yeah, like a real vampire. <laughs> getting your work life, done dude. and go, oh, right. the sun's coming out, let's get home, you know, <laughs> kind of thing, you know, kind of getting in character, you know. Right. Does he, uh, or do they dictate what kind of, you got to keep your hair the same or the same? Yeah, uh, I got to shave the beard yeah. uh, for that because I'm having a goatee now and I was joking with her on the phone and I says, well, you, I got to be clean shaven. She goes, yep. I go, well, I'm under contract with Nunspotter. I got to keep a goatee for a photo shoot. She goes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You know, but there were people that would actually dye their hair. We have a, we had a photo shoot, very important photo shoot, and the girl shows up with red hair and she was blonde in the movie. 
and the producer got really upset, you know, because it's just one of the things when you sign a contract. Right. right. You know, not really formal, but it is a signature on paper. It's got to mean something. Yeah, well, sure. You know, and, and you tell them you're going to do this and give them this for this amount of time, and you go and do something like that. Yeah. You know, you're like, what are you doing? got to keep it professional, man. You try, well, at least just don't ruin it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's a time to have fun. I mean, we're not getting paid, but by all means, you know, don't... Don't throw a, you know, a wrench in everything. You know, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it'll be on DVD, and we'll make sure you guys get copies. Awesome, man. In three words or less, mm-hmm. what do you think of the internet? Three I, words or less. I hate it. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> in three words or less, what do you think of the Detroit Pistons? Absolute rulers. In three words or less, <laughs> what do you think of cable TV? Uh, could do without. In three words or less. Uh, actually, that was all I had. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh. Yeah, you guys get a great basketball. Team. So, all right, here's here's a question that we've been uh, we've we've been pondering on for a while, and I don't think we've ever gotten around to ask you. Sure. Uh, the cover of Hell's Unholy Fire, man, that goat dude on the cover. Mm-hmm. Where is that from? That's my uncle. He used to chase around the backyard like yeah. that when we were kids. And that's oh. me holding up the voodoo doll and to get him away from it. That explains everything. No, no, <laughs> no it's, it's actually from an excellent book. The only thing I ever did in high school was read this book in the library because it was so satanic. It's a book called Witches and Witchcraft. All right. And it's by Jeremy Kingston. And it's a 1975 publication. You can get it on, I got it for 10 bucks on, uh, what's that, e-book thing? Uh, yeah, and I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it? Like a, a website, do you mean? No, no, yeah, what is it? You buy books from it. Uh, a uh, commercial website on the internet. Amazon. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we can say that on the radio. Yeah. But I, I can't talk price. I didn't, but yeah, I, did I say price? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Keep going, okay, just keep I'm going. I'm trying to watch myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, but I got it within a week. I didn't think I'd ever find it again. Right, right. And in fact, we can talk off air about some other great books, and I'll give you some authors and publications, and, and you know, you can get them. They're great. Sweet. But that book is laden with all those photos and in fact that same guy is on, on the back of the cd watching that ritual yeah yeah but there's so many other pictures and a lot of the seven inches we did in that era has those pictures from that book right right really great stuff but that is one of the most haunting pictures yeah man yeah we've always uh, we've always wondered where that was from there's uh, a couple of other bands that have used that i think um another band did it just the face and it's kind of black and white and kind of messed with. Okay. Kind of vexed or stroked a little. You can't really tell, but you can see the... The Chamber Nights was fun because we it was a nightclub, and I'm not allowed in nightclubs, but uh, it was my first time ever in, like, a real bar. And we actually, I met some really cool people, and we just hung out there for a while. And during the breaks, we would just sit and talk. And people actually were nice there, some of them. <laughs> Others were just a little weird. <laughs> but other than that, they were nice. And then Jim is probably, like, the coolest person here, I think, personally, because, I mean, like, he's got so much stuff to say, and he always makes corny jokes, and he, he makes it a fun time being over here, and he's a great actor. He's wonderful at it, and I want to be a singer, too, also, and he's he helps a lot with that, and he's very supportive of almost everything, and he, he's good at um, he's good at everything he does, whether he tries or whether he doesn't. He's good at it. I think Jim is just phenomenal with his music and his acting. Um, but never acting before, he just was really on point. From October to November 2006, uh, things changed quite a bit for us as we initially uh, took on the project. Um, we had a certain amount of crew members that uh, we thought were in for the long haul and uh, much to our chagrin after the first session, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, they decided to uh, take off on us and not come back so that offered uh, actually brought about some problems for you know directors and everyone and kind of put a cloud over everything as far as you know the, the possibility of it ever happening again or being able to, to uh, have it become a reality and then uh, the, the uh, directors rewrote the script and uh, you know after that but from from October to November it was it was pretty interesting being here at rehearsals meeting people and when you're first sitting there, you're wondering, you know, it's like ten little Indians. Who's going to make it? You know, who's going to be there? Everybody has the same fire and same interest and same, you know, freshness. But then, you know, you you sit there and you just wonder, is this person going to be here? You know, are they going to put up with all this? Are they going to go that extra mile? Are they going to do what's asked of them? I mean, they're signing a contract. 
and the contract is a binding agreement, are they going to live up to that? And uh, unfortunately, most of them did not. And maybe fortunately, they did not either, because now we're here and we have a whole new, you know, situation. But, uh, quite impressed with the rapidity and the quickness how the directors were able to rewrite, you know, something so fast and it being pretty much very different and almost sequential to something else at a later point in time, either it could be before or after the initial script. So it worked out. I, I you know, I honestly really like the one that, you know, we finished. I mean, but I'd like to see the other footage used to sometime, somewhere, but, you know, that's up to them. And maybe there's room for a prequel or a sequel or, you know, continuation, but uh, it's, uh, it remains to be seen, I guess. Um, the Lakeview Cemetery at photo shoots. Um, I missed one because I'm very busy. A man of my uh, uh, cultural and artistic interest is uh, needed elsewhere many other times, so unfortunately, uh, couldn't have been there the one time, but I was able to make the one, realizing how important it was for the uh, poster and photos and trailer and whatnot, and just just promotions and stuff. It's those little things you got to do aside from actually being in the film uh, that are necessary evils, if you will. Um, so very cold day, um, and uh, you know we had to do what we had to do. We had some fun with it. Um, speaking of cold, the snow days. Um, there was this dreadful, dreadful Ohio storm that we haven't had in about three years. And it came on a Wednesday. And I remember I couldn't see my car. because this little white Toyota. I saw the wheel, I think. And I'm thinking, well, I'm off today. But maybe I can make rehearsal on time. The one day I could be on time. Because it didn't work. And uh, we didn't have it. <laughs> I called them and they said, uh, don't bother. We're trying to find our house or find our car, too. We're trying to just burrow our way out of the house here and get to the street. So... Uh, it was a cancellation. It happened a few times actually with the weather. Um, you know, you set aside you know time to do something, and then Mother Nature and Father Time do whatever they do to you, and then you got to kind of work around it. But uh, you know, live and learn. Plus, you got to roll with it up here in Northeast Ohio. What are you gonna do? You know, um, Brandy dyed her hair too. That's something. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking getting like a bleach blonde surfer cut midway through too, but uh, something kind of last second compelled me not to but I did cross my mind just to be difficult but then I saw the the impact that the, this has and the difference and just how it changes things and uh, you know it just isn't a good idea to uh, alter your appearance in the middle of something that you're working on because you know you need the same look and the same you know image and if you change that then you've more or less ruined any chance of any extra footage or you know at least in the same time frame but I don't know what she was thinking it wasn't a bad color. This wasn't a good time, I guess. Um, February dates and chaos. Well, I didn't have any dates in February. I think I, I only saw a couple of girls in January. Oh, date. Oh, filming dates. Oh, um, I'm trying to think. I didn't have any problem with anything. I didn't see any chaos. I don't have the I don't have the uh, personality to to let things get chaotic. Even when things are chaotic to me, I, I just kind of let the storm blow over. I, you know, or if someone else is having an issue, and there wasn't a lot of that in this, and I was very happy. I mean. You know, the, the directors, you know, at times had red odds about a few things, you know, you know, but there wasn't really a lot of uh, quarrels or uh, skirmishes between actors and or, and or actors or directors or staff or crew, so it wasn't really a, I don't know really what that question means. It, maybe someone thinks chaotic, or chaotic situations are a little different than what I would consider. But Dave Winters. Where is Dave Winters? That's the question for me. That's the question of the year because he is the Johnny on the spot. You're at the guy's house, you need a piece of tape, you need a hot dog, you need this, boom, boom, you need wood, you need fire. There he is. Where is Dave Winters? Got to know where he's at all the times because he'll make it happen. Definitely a cool guy. Definitely a diamond in the rough. Helped out a lot. Offered us his property and his home and just really treated us really well. And uh, they're lucky to have him. And uh, Quiet She Devil. Great line. Yeah, Got to love that. I wish he could have made that. That would great. Um, and then aside from other places, you know, that place being one of the places, the Chamber Nightclub was another. Um, Again, Kat and the DeFraziers being very, very hospitable to us and letting us do that. Really great people. Um, really lucky that we were allowed to be in there and do that there and uh, maybe give them some exposure as well, obviously, with the movie. And, and you know, it's just a lot of fun and, uh, you know, just having a good time and, you know, getting lucky with people being able to work around us and, and open their doors to us, really, you know, just, you know, treating us like, you know, family almost. It's very nice. Um, I'm not a chamber regular. I'm more of a fantasy guy, but... It's a great place. The whole, you know, the whole shebang is just fantastic. Uh, personal relationships. 
opinions on other actors and actresses. Oh God, do you want to hear this? <laughs> Um, I, I really felt everybody brought, um, individually and collectively for that matter, uh, their, their own fire and their own personalities and their characters and, and as it moved on, their characters kind of, you know, they became more into it and more entrenched in it and were able, you know, to just have, a, you know, a lot of good rapport amongst each, each other and, uh, I thought it, for the most part, everybody did a great job and, uh, a lot of fun working with them. Um, I don't know if I'll remain, you know, close friends with them or in such, you know, cahoots with them, if you will, and at this point, being that the film is almost concluded, but uh, I would hope that we keep in touch and if there's any, you know, possibility for any, you know, any other movies of, you know, in this sequence or something, we could work together to again, again together, but, uh, you know, it's definitely great people. They, they stuck it out, you know, through thick and thin, and, uh, you know, the directors too, very cool. You know, I knew the one guy for a while, and, uh, you know, Got to know them a little better, and I would definitely work with each and every one of them again if, if given the chance. So I uh, wish them well and whatever their uh, endeavors are in life or pursuits, and uh, hope that they're fruitful and come as easy as possible. Uh, getting on to the ship scene. Um, very cool idea. Again, the Defrages and the ship having the actual vessel, real vessel, inside their, their facility, um, able to use it. Have some fun with it. Brought back some memories. I used to hang out on the ship a while ago. Um, when I was a teenager, actually. I used to go to the shows and hang out, so it was kind of cool to reminisce of that. But it was a good idea, and I thought it was a good touch, and I'm interested to see how it turns out, because I haven't seen anything. But uh, definitely cool. And uh, you know, I'd like to see uh, more of that you know, in videos or, or movies in this area. Uh, the drive to rehearsal. Um, does that mean, like, the drive, the urge? or the compelling nature, or the drive, oh, okay. the trek, the drive to rehearsal. Um, well, I live 10 minutes away, so it's nothing. I, I could walk here. The Youngstowners, I don't know about them. Warren. What at Warren? The Warners? I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, it's it's dedication. Getting back to a couple points prior to, it's uh, it's quite a, uh, it's, you know, quite a lot to ask of people that, to, you know, this time of year in this area, uh, to to be out here so frequently, and they did, and uh, really without any any hassle and, or you know, burden, and uh, at least to the film. I mean, it might have been you know on their behalf, but uh, very impressive. Anyone that you know came from wherever to come here or to these rehearsal sites, you know, I, I give them a lot of credit for at least trying, you know, and being there and you know being as uh, ready to work as possible, you know, for the work. Love survival song. Sing it and tell it. Or you can just do one. Well, I was singing it the other day, actually. Um, I think it's a good song. Um, I'd like to see it come to fruition. I don't know where it's at right now. We've had some people drop off, so... I mean, it kind of just fell apart, but... Uh, the potential's there for it to be something. Maybe even in this film, if we have to work with some haste. Um, where you can write, definitely. Um, she's proven that with the script and the song. She can sing. She can do a lot of things. She's one of her many talents, and uh, if uh, enough perseverance and enough patience, I'm sure it'll, it'll come to fruition. Just how, how and when, we're not sure at this point, but uh, it's a good song, and I think it uh, will go well with the film, and maybe the film and the song will remind people of one another when they hear it or see it, so I think it's a good touch, and I think it should be uh, something included somewhere. Hopefully we can, we can see that come to, come to fruition. Encouraging words for people who want to make a movie or act. Um, be ready for anything. Uh, and that means any kind of setback. Sometimes even a serendipity, even a, a uh, you know a, a fortuitous thing that happens that allows you to have even more than you thought. You know, and 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 one thing that they did, which I was very impressed with, and I didn't know if they would. They listened to their people, um, and they let their people, if they had an idea, you know, bounce it off of them, and they gave it a chance. And even if it was crap and it didn't make the cut, it still they were able to acquiesce and they were willing to hear and listen and I thought that was very cool and I think that deep down that they they know also that that's essential um, or it's important or it's 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 handy or it comes you know it, it's something you want to have you know just to be open and be versatile to other people and uh, it can only they can only help but uh, if you want to do something try it and uh, get the right people make sure you get people that want to do it and want to help
and uh, you know, give it a whirl. What's your pleasure, sir? How about a Bloody Mary? So that you can get yourself. Very well. <laughs> little girl. You're a very smart little girl. Yeah, well, neither are you, little man. Why, you? Hey. Let her go. Ha! Huh? What is he gonna do about it? <laughs> Hold on, cut! Take action. Hi, we're at the Boy Scouts of America. What? <laughs> ah, the blood. So nice. I'm sorry, I may have disrupted your train of thought. <laughs> I'll conduct myself a little better next time. And I won't derail the situation. Go ahead, Tiger. There was this guy dressed as a hot dog at a costume party. I says, can I be frank with you? <laughs> I says, too bad there's not two more of you to be a three-dog night. <laughs> I says, you know, you're probably the biggest wiener here. <laughs>